Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel. I'm a pilot currently in the Airbus A330 typewriting and in this video featuring the Atolis A340 in X-Plane we are going to simulate a dual hydraulic failure. Now the dual hydraulic failure is what Airbus calls complex failure and the dual hydraulic and emergency electrical configuration are actually the only two complex failures there are. And for those we have summary procedures available in the QRH which for other malfunctions we don't have. Now why do we need those? Basically because there are so many malfunctions and so many system malfunctions associated with a dual hydraulic failure that Airbus thought well pilots need to prioritize a lot there and we can make that a little bit easier for them by giving them access to a somewhat simplified procedure. Alright so let's have a quick look into the hydraulic system. You can see I kind of triggered the failure already because of the quantity on the green hydraulic system is decreasing. It just takes so incredibly long on this airplane to lose all the quantity that, well, in order to fail the system I needed to activate it a bit earlier. But we've got a little bit of time there. So let's quickly talk about what important stuff the hydraulic systems cover. And this is going to be a very simplified list. So the green hydraulic system basically, as the color suggests, is some of the important system. The green system covers the landing gear extension and retraction, it covers the slats and the flaps, and a lot of flight control surfaces. As you can see on the flight control page over here, you can see the green system is somewhat included in every one of those surfaces, except for the uh, pitch trim there. Okay, so, the green system, as we said, is one of the most important ones. However, Everything the green system covers is backed up by another hydraulic system or by the landing grid gravity extension. So the slats are the main thing covered by the blue system and the flaps are the main thing covered by the yellow system. And again for the landing gear we've got the gravity extension. So now take a moment to think about what would be the most significant combination of hydraulic failures there. If the green system fails you aren't going to have that much of an impact on the slats or flaps. They will be slow but still work, pressurized from the blue and yellow system, and you can still extend your landing gear by gravity, even though you cannot retract it anymore. Also, the green system covers the main brake system. If the blue system fails as well, you are going to lose your slats completely. And if the yellow system fails together with the green system, you're going to lose your flaps completely. Which of the two is most significant? Well, it's the green and yellow because the slats bring you a lot of additional lift, but they don't change your pitch angle associated with that. If the flaps fail, then you will have a significantly increased pitch on the approach. And that is where the problem comes in. So the important thing for us here is green and yellow is the most adverse combination we can have. So that is exactly what we're going to get today. So let me show you how I triggered the failure. In the fault scenario, I started with the green system leak because that one takes a little bit of time to run down, as you can see. And now we're going to add to the second system, which is going to be hydraulic, and this is going to be a yellow system leak. Starting now. Apply now. Okay, and now we are basically all set up for the malfunction. So the entire rest of the things I'm going to show you when we are in flight. So I would say it is about time to release the brakes and get going. Take off. And let's quickly close the hydraulic page. Okay, here we go. Take off. Manflex 69, SRS, runway, auto thrust blue. Thrust set. Knots checked. The one rotate. Too low terrain. Ignore the GPWS warning. How about a farm? Gear up. Too low terrain. I'm just going to cancel that GPWS. That's from a previous. Um, Malfunction I've practiced. Okay, so autopilot one, hydraulic green reservoir low level. 
Okay, let's fly the airplane first. Thrust climb, climb, auto thrust. Flaps one. Speed checked. Flaps one. So as always, first fly the airplane, that's the most important here. But we can see additional malfunctions popping up already. So, flap zero. Speed checked, flap zero. Okay, we're established in a safe climb. Ecam actions. So, hydraulic green reservoir low level. Green engine one pump off. So, hydraulic, green, engine one, confirm, confirmed, off. Then, green electric pump, off. Hydraulic, green, electric pump, off. Green engine four pump, off. Hydraulic, green, engine 4, confirm, confirmed, off. Clear hydraulic, clear hydraulic. Hydraulic, green, engine 1 and 4 pumps, low pressure. Yeah, with the quantity in that system that's expected, clear hydraulic. Air, pack 2, off. Okay, how about we simply switch that on. Hydraulic, green system, low pressure. Yep, that's expected. Clear hydraulic, clear hydraulic. Flag controls. Okay, with the green system failed as expected, clear flag controls, clear flag controls. Wheel. And it's good, auto brake, normal brake, inoperative, and two spoilers on each wing. As expected, clear wheel, clear wheel. Stutters. Okay, stop e -cup. So. Let's see, normal procedures. Set standards. Standard cross check, maintaining flight level 70. No, checked. Okay, what else can we do? Flaps up. And that looks good. Okay. Hydraulic, yellow reservoir, low level. Ecom actions. Yellow engine 3 pump, off. So, think about what's gonna happen now. When we turn the pumps off now, that's going to cause the dual hydraulic failure. So, hydraulic, yellow, engine 3, confirm, confirmed, off. Okay, yellow electric pump off, here we go. Hydraulic, green and yellow, auto, uh, auto flight, auto pilot off. Okay, so, we're in manual flight, alternate law. Okay, hydraulic green and yellow. Ecom actions. Consider red man use. Will that make sense? Come on, hydraulic page. No. The rat won't have any use because the system is empty. If there's no fluid, there's no rat. Okay, minimum rat speed 140 knots. Speed brake, do not use. Maneuver with care. Clear hydraulic. Clear hydraulic. Flight controls. Alternate law. Protection lost. Maximum speed 305 knots or mark 0.82. Okay. Clear flight controls. Clear flight controls. Land S up in red. Starters. Okay. Stop e -cam. So let's go on a downwind vector here. Let's go zero eight zero. So it is always worth trying if your autopilot still work, but you can already see it in the in-op systems down there that they don't. But it's always worth a try. Also, we do still have auto thrust available, so be sure to make use of the maximum automation you have available to you. So let's go ahead now and think about, do we have any resets that we can do? No. Any normal procedures? No. Okay. Continue ECOM. So, status. 
Speed brake, do not use. Maximum speed, 305 or Mach 0.82. Maneuver with care. For approach procedure, GPW as flap mode off. For landing, use flap 2. Slat flap jump procedure, apply. For landing, use flaps 2. For landing gear gravity extension, maximum speed, 250 knots. Landing gear gravity extension down. Approach speed, VLS plus 25. Landing distance procedure apply. And I don't know why we have that twice, that should only be there once. Alternate law, protection lost, consider rat man use. In up systems, flight control protection, green and yellow hydraulic, landing gear retraction, autopilot 1 and 2, flaps, left and right outer aileron, right elevator, most spoilers, reverser 1, 3 and 4, cat 2, no fuel steering, normal brakes, GPWS, and cargo doors. Remove stutters? Remove stutters. Ecam actions complete. Alright, so that was a lot of stuff, wasn't it? And for the ordinary pilot to determine the uh, correct actions necessary now, things would be, well, not quite that easy. There would be a lot of potential for error. And for that reason, Abbas has introduced the summary procedures in the QRH. So the summary is what we are going to have a look at right now. So this is what it looks like. It is a little bit of an older version there because as I'm doing an A330 type rating, I only have the A330 summary available, which is a little bit different than the A340. However, let's use this one and take a look into what we have over here. So, hydraulic green and yellow system low pressure summary. For the cruise, maximum uh, speed brake do not use, maximum speed 305 knots on Mach 0.82. Maneuver with care, alternate law protection lost, fuel increased fuel consumption. Now why do we have increased fuel consumption? Well, we don't know when exactly all those systems failed up here, so having a look into the flight control page, you can see the outboard, outboard ailerons are in the hinged position, so they are located a little bit further up which of course creates additional drag and if we went to the QRH there would be a fuel penalty table that would tell us exactly how much more fuel we are going to use. Okay, then for the approach, slats slow, flaps jammed, cat 1 only. GPW as slat mode if, if flaps less or equal than 2 off. Okay, so GPWS Flat mode, off. Remember I turned the system off earlier due to the uh, malfunction I had from the previous session I did without restarting the sim, so my apologies for that. Okay, for slat extension, speed select VFE next minus 5 knots. When in landing config, decelerate to calculated the approach speed, landing gear gravity extension, maximum speed 250 knots. For the landing, flare, only one elevator and two spoilers per wing. Aircraft slightly sluggish, direct law. Spoilers, only two per wing. Reversers, only number two. Braking, alternate, no nose wheel steering. And in case of a go around, no gear retraction, increased fuel consumption, and that is really a hefty increased consumption that we have there. For circuit, maintain slats or flaps configuration. Recommended speed is the maximum minus 10 knots or 250. And for diversion, Okay, what do I have there? Fuel, wing tank imbalance. Okay, we can ignore that. That is from a previous malfunction. I'll clear that. Okay. So, um, the important things for us now are basically all included in the summary procedure here in the QRH. So that's the really important thing that we have up here. Now let's go ahead with our approach preparation. We are going to fly an immediate return towards Munich, but let's have a quick look into the systems as well. As you can see, our flaps are not working, but at least they are completely retracted, so that is something at least. Rem Imagine if the fault happened while we were retracting the flaps, then they would be stuck in a position somewhere in between. Now any flap would be better than no flap, because it would reduce our pitch on the final, but nonetheless it is still a good thing to uh, have a look at this. 
So let's go ahead and quickly program an immediate return. We will set up an ILS approach, Romney 26 right, no star, no via, direct to Gudek, radial in 080. Okay, performance page, well, let's activate the approach phase, even though that is going to change our speed, so, well, you know what, we need that time anyway, so, yeah, activate approach phase. So, 1015, 18 degrees, and the wind is calm. Minimum 1670. Like so. Okay. So, let's keep flying our plane. All right, so let's go ahead with our approach preparation. We are somewhat on the downward over here, like seven miles to run till we can turn base. Obviously, it would be a good point to alert the cabin crew as well, since the stopping performance of the airplane is going to be somewhat impaired. We still have the blue hydraulic system. With that, we still have our alternate brakes, but nonetheless, our stopping performance is somewhat impaired, so we want to be really careful here. Because we might blow a tire, we might cause a brake fire because of the higher approach speed. We will see about that. Okay, so let's have another look into the summary procedure there. If the flaps are less or equal than 2, GPWS slap mode off. We did that. Is there any recommendation on the flap setting to be used for the approach? Well, not in here. However, at least in the A330, if you do calculate your landing performance and you enter this small function, you will be advised to use flap 2 only. In the A340, it's not in the procedure, it seems. So for that reason, we are going to use flaps 3. Or rather, flap lever 3, because the flaps are not actually going to go into that position, of course. Okay, and that is basically the preparation for the approach. So, as you can see, lots of stuff in the status page, but much less stuff that we actually need to care about on the actual approach itself, as you can see from the summary procedure. And now you know why Airbus introduced the summaries, and you can see why it was actually quite a good thing from them to do that. Okay, let's go ahead and descend down to our platform altitude of 5000. So, thrust I load missent, alt 5000 blue, set QNH 1015 it actually is. And we've got 1015 cross check passing 6700 now. Checked. Okay, cool. So, for the approach, slats, and slats are slow, flaps are jammed. So, we are going to go for a little bit longer final over here. Let's take something like uh, 15, or maybe even 20 miles, because that's just going to make our life a little bit easier. As we'll have a lot of time available to actually extend the flaps. Or the slats, I should say. So, GPWS slat mode, if flaps are less or equal than 2, off, that's off. For slat extension, select speed VFE next, minus 5 knots. Okay, so, VFE next, you can always, you need to have a look into the actual position of the flaps and slats, because there might be something extended over there, and the indications on the PFD are coming straight from the indications on the PFD are coming straight from the flap lever position and not from the actual position. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, then let's go ahead with our slat extension, and I'm also going to start our base turn. We are like 18 miles out now. Okay, so heading one seven zero, speed alt star. Alt. Ok, 
Okay, so for the ladder extensions, speed select VFV next minus five. We are below that, 280. So 275. We are below that. Okay. Flaps one. Speed checked. Flaps one. So now you can see the flaps are stuck. The slats are slowly coming out. Okay, in this config I'm going to fly the airplane onto the final so that we don't get too slow. But you can start getting an impression of the pitch we are going to have on final approach. So this is 7.5 degrees right now to more or less maintain level flight. Let's start turning final. Two three zero. Last of localizer blue, cat one. Again, cat one is what we are expecting according to the procedure as well. All right, so localizer, uh, we're still a little bit far out, so we aren't receiving the localizer yet. That's an X-plane problem there. In real life at 19 miles, you would absolutely get it. But then let's simply go to nav mode. Okay, lock star, there it is. Lock. In real life, you normally get it like 30 miles out and more, but in the simulator, unfortunately, in X-plane only from uh, 19 miles. Okay, so, established on the localizer, let's continue slowing our airplane down. So, again, VFV next, minus 5, VFV next. Now this one, you can see we've got flaps 1, flaps 1, so this is correct. So, VFV next is about, what's that, uh, 230, now well, you can see it up here, 215 something. Okay, so, flaps two. Speed checked, flaps two. And now flaps two would be the first position where the flaps would normally extend in the Airbus. So, as we don't have the flaps now, we start seeing abnormal pitch configurations as our speed decreases. And here you can see it. This is like 10 degrees of pitch now, just to maintain our altitude. Tiny bit more even. Okay, glide slope alive. So, in order to give us a little bit more useful pitch, the performance tool would calculate our approach speed for us, and it would be usually somewhere just below the um, F speed, once we're in config 3. So let's go config 3 now be checked but you can see the slats are fully out already so it's not going to make much of a difference in the a330 the slat system is a tiny bit different from the 340 but you can see how this gives us even less speed so i'm actually going to keep the speed just over here because otherwise our pitch just gets too high and we are going to tail strike unfortunately i don't have landing performance calculation tool for the a340 which would really help us here to calculate the target approach speed. Okay, so glide slope star. Let's intercept the glide. What I'm going to do, I will enter the approach of 170 in here, because now we can manage the speed again and we can make use of the ground speed mini function, which in selected speed is not available. Okay then, when in landing configuration, decelerate to calculate it via approach, and then we do a landing gear gravity extension. So we are in landing configuration now, and you can see our pitch on the final. So let's do the landing gear gravity extension. Confirm, confirmed. Okay, this is a little bit nasty right now, getting the um, levers out there. Okay, landing gear down. When the landing gear is down, we're going to put the um, gear lever down as well, and that's going to be it.
2,500. Okay, also when the gear is down, chances are we are going to go into direct law. It didn't tell us down here, but it might happen because as you can see on the landing part of the summary, it tells us direct law. So chances are it's going to happen at lower altitude when we go into flare logic then. Okay, maximum speed 250 knots. That is understood. Landing gear, leave it down. The gear is down. Arm the slats for whatever it's worth. No slide on. Turn off lights on. Okay, so let's read the um, landing summary. Flare, only one elevator and two spoilers per wing. Aircraft slightly sluggish, direct law. So the flare performance is going to be worse than usual. That's what we can tell already. Braking, alternate, no nose field steering. So we have to stop the plane on the runway. And that is the usage of the summary basically complete. What we can also do once we are done with the summary and have a little bit of time on the final is just to have a quick last look through the status page if there is anything on there that we can still do. So GPWS mode flop, flap off we did. Slat flap jump procedure. We don't need to do that because it is part of the summary. For landing use flap 2. Okay, so over here it actually says it use flap 2. So let's go flap 2. It doesn't make a difference because the slats are fully out anyway. Okay, and the rest of that is understood, so remove status. Okay, and with that, you can see the pitch that we have at the moment. We need something somewhere around 8 degrees of pitch. And that is a completely unusual attitude for the landing for us. And we don't have much room for the flare. So that makes our landing quite interesting. But let's go ahead and give it a try. Land. I'm not going to chase the glide slope too much. And you can see our tail strike symbol coming into view over there. So you can see how tight this is. Continue. Okay. That's all flare we can do. And we're down. Okay, reverse us. You can see only engine 2 reverse is working. Yeah, we're gonna ignore that. That shouldn't even come up with a landing inhibit. Okay, so let's be careful with the brakes. Only a thousand PSI. Now I've got to stop the airplane. You can see how this takes quite a bit longer than it usually would, huh? Okay, here we are. Parking brake set, and that's it. That is the dual hydraulic green and yellow failure basically completed. As you can see, the airplane does fly quite well. It's still in, um, it's still well controllable. It does have a lot of issues though, and the pitch on final is pretty much our problem there. You could see how it could barely flare the airplane at all. And that is, of course, something that we will tell the cabin crew as well, so that they can really properly strap in. All right, so that's this video. If you did like it, do let me know by hitting that like button, as it does really help out the channel. Also, do let me know what you think about it in the comments below. And finally, if you're interested in more, then make sure to subscribe to the channel. Finally, if you really love what I'm doing, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. And in the meantime, I would like to say thank you very much for watching. Hope that you enjoyed this one. And I'm looking forward to see you all again on the next one. Thank you very much, and I see you.